Salutations, everybody. It is Maddie here today, and we are talking about a company that is near and dear to my heart. No, it's not the company on my chest that is literally near to my heart. We are talking about BioWare, the legendary RPG developer who's brought us the likes of Star Wars, Knights of the Old Republic, Dragon Age, Mass Effect. I think most of us out there have fond memories of each of these series. So they've come upon some hard times now. What I want to do with this video is really document where the transition started, what plagued them throughout their development cycles, and what led to them going from one of the best RPG developers of all time to, well, what they are now. So I have a massive script to my right here, and uh, we're going to need the spectacles for this one, not the gamer glasses, but the spectacles so that we can go through all this. So here we go. Let's talk about Bioware and how they fell from grace. Beginning with the foundation, they started making RPGs in 1998 and established themselves as an RPG powerhouse with the likes of Baldur's Gate and Neverwinter Nights. These were isometric style RPGs, very different from the type of game that Bioware makes nowadays. But their first big bang in popularity didn't really come until Bioware teamed up with Xbox for a console exclusive in 2003, and that game was, as most of you already know, one of my all-time favorites, Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Much like prior games in Bioware's history, KOTOR's structure, from leveling and customizing your character to how combat played out, was all decided through a D&D rule set. KOTOR used the third edition and explored a part of Star Wars that was quite foreign to most of us out there. So it still managed to blend that familiarity of the D&D rule sets that their original RPGs tried to make use of, but at the same time being something a little more action oriented as you ran around in third person instead of with the camera above you. After Code Tour, two years later, came still to this day, a underappreciated IP from Bioware known as Jade Empire. Jade Empire is an action RPG set in a world focused on Chinese mythology. It also has steampunk elements, but this was the first time where it had been signified that Bioware wanted to change how their games were played. The key word in Jade Empire is action. Unlike the round-based, more tactical combat of prior releases from the company, Bioware had you engaging in martial arts and using spells as the last surviving spirit monk. You would learn multiple forms of martial arts that you could use in combat, so things were more fun to play on this front, but it didn't sacrifice the choice and consequence the studio was known for. You still had the morality system from KOTOR, multiple outcomes for quests, but much more fun gameplay. So this is where you start to see that swing in personality almost. Okay, we've gone from isometric RPG developer to third person, more round based combat. Now they're moving into action. And that is something that you're going to see pop up more and more in the future as they started to deviate from their original formula. In 2007, Bioware took their biggest swing yet with another new IP that would soon become legendary, pardon the pun, in the gaming sphere. Mass Effect arrived two years after Jade Empire and continued the core of what the game was built off of. Fun, action-focused, accessible gameplay, but retaining all the role-playing elements of prior entries to give players agency and replayability. The difference, however, is, as you can already tell and most of you already know, Mass Effect was a third-person shooter. Now, it goes without explaining, but in Mass Effect, you play as Commander Shepard. He or she, depending on who you pick, is voiced. However, this didn't seem to impede much as we saw the introduction of the Paragon and Renegade system allowing for more intermittent character building choices piled on top of the more major story decisions. It was clear Bioware was beautifully towing that line they had created by blending action with true replayability and exciting, meaningful choices. Here's where the identity crisis comes in. A year after Mass Effect 1, right? You're thinking they're on the top of the mountain now. How do they start to fall this early? No, I'm not talking about Sonic Chronicles, the Dark Brotherhood. That is a game which is, we'll, we'll pretend it doesn't exist. No, we're actually talking about a year later, the same year Sonic Chronicles came out, EA bought the holding company for Bioware as well as Pandemic Studios for a measly $775 million. Now, while sadly Pandemic went on to be closed down, Bioware would be crucial to EA in its future, as well as clearly fundamental in some of the negative changes the company would soon be making. More to my point of the identity crisis, Bioware pumped the brakes on action and went back to what KOTOR was built off of, strategy. 
That was with the release in 2009 of Dragon Age Origins. It seemed like EA wasn't making a strong impact yet. In Dragon Age Origins, you can pick from one of six different origin stories that become the building blocks for your character's interaction with the world. As you come through Ferelden slaying Darkspawn and amassing an army to finish them once and for all, based off all your choices, it felt like a back to basics approach. Even more so was the combat. The gameplay of Dragon Age Origins really did take KOTOR and just evolve it. You could pause the action, select what your party members would do and even bring the camera way up high to get a bird's eye view. All in all, Bioware's golden era continued unscathed as they now have shown the ability to dip in and out of the action RPG genre and still create exciting tactical RPGs all these years later. So as you see, it's going like this, right? They're going up, 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 kind of plateauing a little bit, slight dip because EA bought them, and then back up a little bit because of Dragon Age Origins. It seems like EA was just there to help them. But with pandemic shutting down, you had to wonder if did pandemic bite off too much more than they could chew, or was it something having to do with EA? Well, it actually had to do with pandemic. So the concern was not valid at this point in time. And even more so because afterwards, Mass Effect 2 comes out in 2010. Now, I don't think I really need to preach the good word of Mass Effect 2 here. I think it's the best Mass Effect game of them all. And I know many agree with that. You know, Suicide Mission, great, 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 great mission. But, ladies and gentlemen, it is in 2011 that I think Bioware started to really lose themselves. And that's with the release of Dragon Age 2. If there's one thing you may not have picked up by this point in time, allow me to point out to you that Bioware has been pumping these games out with a maximum of two years being the gap between releases. They were literally churning out RPG after RPG, exhaustion, burnout, something had to be settling in at this point in time. Dragon Age 2's team clearly took one look at the success of Mass Effect, how big it had become compared to Dragon Age, and said, hey, we gotta do this. That meant instead of tactical combat, which was presented in Dragon Age Origins, you were playing an ability-based button masher because instead of action fitting the vision, Bioware went with action because action sells. While the combat felt like a large departure for the series, what was even more disappointing is in a year where a world as broad and as diverse and dense with content as Skyrim had launched, Bioware, who was still known for top-tier RPGs, stuck you in Kirkwall, and you stayed in Kirkwall. The city was bland, boring, lacked any excitement whatsoever, and once again was a huge departure from what the original was built off of, where you traveled across all Ferelden. It felt like as a consumer, Bioware wasn't sticking to their vision and instead making it action-focused and having Hawk be voiced because these are prominent selling points at this point in time. That same year, Bioware Austin released Star Wars The Old Republic. Instead of a third entry in the series, which was, to my displeasure, my absolute sadness in life, discontinued and cancelled in 2009, they went forward with an MMORPG. This was Bioware's decision to continue after Obsidian made the phenomenal KOTOR 2, and begrudgingly, fans hopped on board despite Bioware claiming that this game was KOTOR 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, and 9, yes! really but fortunately over time star wars the old republic proved to be quality storytelling and bring fun choice to the table despite it being in an online space however this is when ea's choice in 2009 after acquiring bioware to split them into an mmo slash rpg team would really begin to also hurt them over time now 2012 is where it really heats up right red green blue endings be damned they're frustrating but what's worse day one dlc there is nothing worse than day one DLC. EA is known for what they did with Mass Effect 3 and how they actually ruined any excitement for this game. The company known for gradually implementing microtransactions wherever they went was only just getting started here. Mass Effect 3, the finale to the trilogy, had a companion, questline, abilities, and animations all locked behind a content pack worth $8. To make matters worse, data miners discovered these very assets were just sitting in the full game. It was quite literally a part of the game, but a paywall had been set up to compel consumers to spend more money day one to earn revenue. And while I adore this mode, Mass Effect 3 did boast a multiplayer mode that may arguably been out of place. And like I said, I love it, but an ex Bioware dev in 2017 went on to say they believe that this mode alongside FIFA was the reason that loot boxes were on the rise across a lot of games in their online experiences. So Mass Effect 3, look, I love it, but it set a lot of dangerous precedents 
when it released. It had loot boxes and a game series that was known for single player content. It tacked on that multiplayer mode and while I think they did it well, still loot boxes were there. It had day one DLC. These were dangerous moves by EA. It significantly hurt a lot of the reception from consumers when it came to Mass Effect 3. But as you can see, they're slowly stepping away more and more. It's nothing like a dramatic swing, right? What I'm trying to focus on here with this video is it's step by step. They're little side steps that are moving them away from their vision that guided them so strongly through the golden age of Bioware. So 2014 happens, right? 2014 Dragon Age Inquisition. And while the game won game of the year, it was clearly divisive among a lot of fans. Some did love that the game managed to be big and broad and branched all the Dragon Age characters together in an epic story and allowed for deep customization of your character. However, a lot of the content was a bit repetitive and it didn't seem to feel as much like the Dragon Age games of yore. Leaving opinions to the wayside, however, the biggest mistake EA and Bioware made together was that they used the Frostbite engine to start making their games. Yes, Bioware was very much a part of this decision to use this engine. Former general manager Aaron Flynn told Kotaku that it was their decision. We had been wrapping up Mass Effect 3 and we just shipped Dragon Age 2 and we knew that our Eclipse engine, the one that we shipped Dragon Age 2 on, wasn't going to cut it for future iterations of Dragon Age. It couldn't do open world, the renderer wasn't strong enough, those were the two big ones. We thought about multiplayer as well as Eclipse was single player only, so yes, for the lamented multiplayer mode that came with Dragon Age Inquisition. Even if you like Dragon Age Inquisition, I don't think anyone talks about its multiplayer mode. They went with the Frostbite engine. That was one of their compelling reasons behind it. Once again, to just jam in a tacked on multiplayer mode. So this led to wrestling with the engine, which would prove to repeat itself in the future time in, time out. But what happened is that Inquisition had two MMO directors leaving its quest design. So sadly, that made Inquisition feel like each of the spaces that were in the game were like zones in an MMO. Collect five of these, kill three of this enemy, investigate this point of interest, solve two of these. Inherently, the engine limited what they could do creatively for some time, and EA would only serve to push this engine more in the coming years with some games that you may have heard of. A testament to the issues with the Frostbite engine, it would be three years later until we saw the next game from Bioware instead of the usual maximum of two. This time, it was Mass Effect Andromeda, one of the biggest technical failures with a game at launch. The game did so poorly that it led to the series being put on ice, and it wasn't until 2020 that we heard more in the name of Mass Effect Legendary Edition, a remaster of the first three Mass Effect games. Now, while some of us saw the writing on the wall, 2017's Mass Effect Andromeda is really where the internet came crashing down on Bioware and how largely they had departed from the golden era. My Face is Tired quickly became a meme, the writing and quality of the story not nearly being up to par whatsoever compared to past entries, and Bioware almost immediately abandoning it, providing zero post-launch support outside of, of course, fixing the game, making it somewhat launch ready. Instead of this game being made by Bioware's Edmonton studio, which was responsible for the three prior Mass Effect titles, it was handled by Bioware Montreal, which was subsequently shut down, and that's because Edmonton was tinkering on a little something, a little, little game you may have heard of, and that game was called Anthem. Yeah, so this was the thing, man. Management decisions really plagued Bioware big time, and it's really shown as we dig into Andromeda more, but even more so with Anthem. Just as the dust was beginning to settle for Mass Effect Andromeda, Jason Schreier dropped a bombshell of a piece three months after the game's launch, highlighting the developmental troubles that plagued Mass Effect Andromeda. It turns out that the game was in development for five years, but the bulk of it was created in 18 months. In a strange way, it's actually kind of impressive that they made a game this big that quickly, but clearly highlighted directional issues for the studio. Not only that, but it shined a spotlight on the infamous Frostbite engine, which was said by multiple members of the studio to not be able to allow players to even manage their inventory or manage party members right away. This was entirely made from scratch and clearly ate away at development time. Naturally, this led to crunch in the studio, which deteriorated the morale for the brand, and that damage would be sustained heading into their next release, and their worst one, Anthem. 
Anthem released in 2019 and served as the biggest change for the company yet. With growing engine problems, technical issues, and poor creative choices across the board, BioWare absolutely needed the reset button. Instead, they honed in on a tired genre, the live service looter shooter, and took their own crack at it. Admittedly, the game played well enough. It felt good to fly around and shoot, but it was incredibly empty, lifeless, constantly having load times plaguing the game. The story was non-existent as well as the end game not even being there. So much was wrong with this game from top to bottom that the player base quickly abandoned the game in no time. The game was so quickly dropped by Bioware that they left Anthem's Christmas decorations up and it took months after the holiday had passed for anyone, including the community, to notice and say something. So yeah, Anthem came out it was a colossal failure, and I know this was recent, so it doesn't need as much recapping, but you see what happened here, right? They started focusing on action. They started doubling down on it. They started basing clear creative decisions off of, off of money. They started to focus on day one DLC. They started to do loot boxes. Then they started to do the Frostbite engine consistently because EA was pushing it more and more. They wanted all their games to use it. You see how it keeps building. Then they need money. Looter shooter, let's do it. Now we're seeing in 2020, they're doing the Legendary Edition for Mass Effect cash easy right there so see how it just keeps developing it's like a snowball going down a hill keeps getting bigger 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 that's what happened here anthem was the killing blow to any remaining trust in bioware as a developer to see them effortlessly swing between tactical and action rpgs with grace and transition into trend following and being handcuffed by technology forced upon them is a sad demise Jason Schreier appeared yet again with another Bioware bombshell, this time detailing what happened behind the scenes of Anthem. The biggest gut punch was highlighting more crunch, and this had led the staff into various mental health issues. The studio built a pedigree and switched over to a place where careers would go to end. It was also pointed out that this game was in development for an insane seven years, but only entered full production with 18 months to go. The game was supposed to be named Beyond, but then it changed days before its reveal, which confused staff internally. So much about this game was wrong. There were people who, when the game was revealed, right, when Anthem, we saw the trailer as consumers, there were people who were seeing it within the company for the first time. They had no idea what this game was, and they still released it so now it's 2020 bioware is quiet we just know a dragon age game is on the horizon as well as another mass effect game furthermore as i've mentioned earlier mass effect legendary edition is slated to release in the first quarter of 2021 certainly bioware needs a guaranteed winner here and that's where their story currently sits a lot of people have speculated that they are going to end up shutting down closing down i think ea values them a lot where they will foot the bill for them and make sure that they stay open but bioware absolutely as you can see here needs to get on track it's been horrible ea needs to let frostbite engine go let bioware develop an rpg without it let them go to unreal engine let them make something truly phenomenal with that i think that's one thing that's holding them back the other thing that's holding them back management issues people got to get their act together figure out a proper work cycle a direction stop changing it in the middle of development whether it was andromeda or it was anthem both these games were thrown together in a number of months instead of the multi-year development cycles we see and on one front it's impressive like wow they put together this very complex big game in a matter of 18 months not even two years that's insane to think about but it came at human sacrifice it came of course at the cost of something that could have been way better because if they had a true focus and a true vision that wouldn't have become an issue but i think ultimately what happens here is bioware needs to switch engines and they need to have someone just direct them strongly and be like this is what we're doing and it's not changing and just go forward so that's how bioware fell from grace ladies and gentlemen a company i care about dearly and i still believe that there is bounce back potential there as they acquire new talent and they start adding more people to their studio and start to let a lot of the veterans go who were there during the golden ages they will become an even more different company but i think a lot of people really want to see them retain and grab that rpg king title back so time will tell i don't have too much hope but i hold out enough just to see them make a good game at least that'll do it for me ladies and gentlemen what do you think of bioware what do you think of the position they're in let me know in the comments down below other than that i'll talk with each and every single one of you very soon stay sexy stay active i love you all peace